Mm. Man. Um, what are some of the things that are not working well? Uh, to put it simply, um, we, we don't do a good job of, of confronting the past. Um, and I think that the only way for us to, to change and the only way for us to get better and to heal is if we confront the things that we know have happened um, and instead of continuing to just sweep it under the rug, you know, because we've been doing that forever and it hasn't worked, right? So we have to do something different. Um, so it doesn't work when we ignore the things that we know have happened. Uh, we have to address those things. We have to face those things. Um, and then that's the only way that we can, we can truly move forward. Uh, some of the things, um, some of the things are getting fixed. I, I think uh, a, a lot of things that aren't working well are systems that were put in place by people who didn't have very <laughs> good lives to themselves. So uh, just taking those systems and, and readjusting to the people of today and how our society is today and how inclusive and diverse we all are, we need to take into account um, how we deal with those cultures and those people in um, today's society. Uh, are there things that are working well? I don't know. I, that's, that was truly what I put for that question when I started to look at these. I personally don't see a ton of things currently going well, but I see a lot of potential. Um, I think that you know, projects like this bringing, you know, kind of immigration and the American dream into the conversation. Um, it's important, you know, we all came from somewhere and there's no real reason to persecute others coming from somewhere currently. Education is not working well in America. Uh, people have been miseducated and some people, unfortunately, uh, ch are choosing not to be educated at all. They want, uh, there's a, there's a, anti-science, anti-intellectual sentiment that's been uh, going on for a while now. And uh, I think that's dangerous. And with the proliferation and power of social media, to have an uneducated mass of people who can voice their opinions at, at their fingertips without consequence is a very dangerous thing. It's, it's a new type of mob that is developing and it was dangerous and we need to, we need to be mindful. And people who, who do care about Intellect, intellectual things and humanity and have empathy need to be willing to communicate and to encourage reading books, real books, not just things on the screen, reading real books with real paper, those types of things. Those things should not be lost. They should be uh, used to enhance all of the technological advances that we're having right now. Oof. Uh, a lot of things are not working well in America. I think there is a big discrepancy uh, between the wealthy, the haves, and the have-nots. I, um, I think that wealth is disproportionately measured in, in the United States. I think that uh, resources, I think it's a, a big divide, and I, I really don't, I don't believe that uh, our military-industrial complex is, is working out for us. I don't feel any more secure having bases all over the, U all over the world. <laughs> you wouldn't answer all that today. Uh, <laughs> um, I think because of the, the teacher part of me, I don't really like the way that we extrapolate information right now. So that's one of the things I'm noticing that isn't working. And that, and that really came to light this year of this, um, I've never seen such a lack of respect for expertise before. It probably has happened before, but that definitely became clear this year in us dealing with this pandemic. Just, oh, scientists, psh, I know as much as them. <laughs> and, um, and because of that, we're, you know, we're at a pretty dangerous place. Um, the other thing is our political structure. Obviously, it's not working. Um, and, you know, of course, as, a, as an African-American, we have this interesting relationship with politics, whereas for a lot of us this year, we felt like, 
okay, here we go, choosing between two old white men again. Like, how do we get back here? But at the same time, we have to make pragmatic decisions because we are usually the communities hit the hardest. So the entire structure has to change because what's being revealed to us now is when a, when a psychopath is in office, <laughs> this, this time between the election and inauguration is literally dangerous. So that's what comes to mind right now. But then there's also the food industry and da 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 and all that stuff. <laughs> that's, a, that's a deep question. I'm going to only speak from um, my backing. I grew up on the north side of Jacksonville, the northwest side of Jacksonville. And some of the things that I see in the community that is not working is exposure. Um, and a level of attention to the schools on that side of town that really, really needed. Um, there is a lot of talent. There are a lot of brilliant brains and all they need is the opportunity and the exposure. Um, and sometimes that's the only thing that changes a child. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter how they grow up. Sometimes the opportunity and the exposure just changes the way that brain Thinks, you know, I was listening to an interview to Shonda Rhimes and she always, you know, rants and raves about her imagination. And I think that's a good thing to rant and rave about. Um, she always rants and raves about it. But she say even her big imagine, imagination was stifled until she saw somebody like Oprah Winfrey. And then the floodgates of that imagination just opened up more because she saw, you know, Oprah on TV, so that made her dream bigger, that made her think larger, that made her, you know, go after her dreams with even more tenacity. Um, and because she was able to get exposed and have the opportunity to show her love of work, now she's able to have a Shondaland, you know? <laughs> so, exposure and opportunity. <laughs> There's a lot that's not working well in America. That's a that's a, a deep question, um, a heavy question. But I think there's a lot that isn't working in America that has never, ever worked in America. And it's sort of just the world that we live in and we adapt and we adjust. Um, as generations go forward, we adapt and we adjust. We make do. Um, we try to make a better way for those who will come behind us. And I think that's just sort of, that's all we know, you know? It's never been great. It's never been great for people like me. Um, we, we do what we have to do. We adapt and adjust and we make the best life that we can. Currently, right now, I think it's, it's a constant kind of boil that's been something that's been kind of like enriched in, I think, our whole history, which is just this constant kind of division of ideas. Um, I think now more than ever, there's a big polarity between economic class, social class, political party, what have you. Um, I think it's, it's, it should be very easy to find common ground with um, different individuals that you see every day, but it seems that we are kind of in our own little hubs um, of our own, what, what I think and what I believe is right. Um, and I think that that's, although that that is kind of like a very important part of what America was founded on, I think that that can be kind of a double-edged sword. There are a lot of discretions against people's differences. Um, there's this idea that if you're different, you're wrong or you don't have a place. And I think that when we get to that point of not being able to recognize somebody else's differences as a advancement for us and as a benefit for us, it really takes out all of the opportunity to expand our culture, to expand our economy, to expand the viewpoints that we have, not only within ourselves, but on one another. Listening. Um, I think that's the number one problem in America is people listening. And I don't think they realize what listening actually means. In order to really hear somebody, it just doesn't require you being quiet. It requires you denouncing the you inside of yourself um, that wants to get their point across and really trying to hear out and understand what is being said. 
Um, and then that also plays a part too in the individual who is speaking. Um, <laughs> because if you're not worth listening to, or if what you're saying doesn't make sense, um, or it can't be supported, or you know, it just has gaping holes in it, I mean, man, you, 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 you're going up the creek and unfortunately leading that person into more just rage, if you will, of, of I can't find the answer. I can't find the answer. I want to know why. Um, so I would say that's the biggest problem in America right now is people actively listening to each other. 